you to this session where we do counseling, Bible teachings, and we also do motivational talks. Uh, today is a new day that the Lord has made that we may rejoice and be glad in it. We are going to rejoice not because of our circumstances, not because of how well things are going, not because of anything that is surrounding us, but because of him who has created us, who has also uh, given his only begotten son, so that he can die on the cross to reconcile us with our maker. So we are going to rejoice this morning because of the Lord, because you are alive. As I keep on saying, almost every day, we rejoice because we are alive and well. There are many people who would have wanted to see this particular day. There were so many people who had so many plans for the day, but they are no more. And because you and me, we are alive, we should rejoice and we should praise the Lord because the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So welcome to this session. This is Liz Refuge TV, and my name is Liz Kagwanja. Uh, we have been looking at God's promises this year, and we have been in series from the last few weeks of discussing the promise of uh, God's cleansing. And so we are in God's cleansing part five. We have done three, four parts, and today we are in part five. So I want to say this morning that God's forgiveness and cleansing go hard in hand. God's forgiveness and cleansing go hand in hand. Once you become a Christian or you are born again, you don't have to be haunted by your past life. You don't have to be haunted by the sins you committed in the past. Why? Because when we are saved, we receive God's forgiveness and cleansing. And there are people who are saved today. And they keep on being worried. They keep on being haunted by their past sins. They keep on fearing. They live a life of fear. A life of fear, wondering what maybe people would say if they discover what you did in the past. Maybe you killed a person in the past and today you are saved and you keep on being worried. Or maybe you did something very bad to a friend. Maybe you cheated. Maybe you stole. And all these things, when we left last week, we were saying the Bible was telling us to lay down, lay down every thing that weighs you down, to lay down every sin that has uh, weighed you down or that has worried you. All right? So there are people, that's what I'm saying, who are saved, but because they don't have the knowledge of God, the knowledge of, God, of what God has done for them, of what God is doing, and what God will do for them in the future. Because they don't have the knowledge of the fact that 
God is in control of their lives, that they even don't belong to themselves, but they belong to God, all these things, they do not have the knowledge of them. When we accepted Jesus in our hearts, God promised to take care of our sins. That is why we continue experiencing God's forgiveness and cleansing every day. So if you are there today, my sister, my brother, if you are there and you are saved and you do not live a peaceful life because you always think you are always haunted by your past sins, your past deeds, what you did. Maybe when you were a child, you did something and somebody told you something also concerning what you did. And maybe somebody told you, you will never prosper, you will never be blessed, you will never go anywhere. You know, you did something, maybe even out of ignorance. And somebody, maybe a relative or your father, your mother, or maybe even another person somewhere said something. And so you have been haunted because somebody said, you'll never get anywhere, you'll never prosper, You'll never be anybody because somebody said something because of something you did. I've come to tell you today, this morning, that there is hope. That if you know God and you have the knowledge of God, what God can do. And we keep on saying that what God can do, no man can do. If you, have, you are haunted and you fear and you are frustrated in life because you don't have the knowledge of God. But if you have the knowledge of God, the knowledge of who God is and the knowledge of what God can do in your life, all this fear will go away. Because you'll get to know that God is not a man that he should lie. He's not. And God, as I keep on saying, is almighty, all-powerful, omnipresent. He's everything. God is everything. He's all in all. He's all in all that you need in this life and even in the life to come. So if you have the knowledge of God, then you'll find that you'll be free. you live a free life. Hmm? You live a free life, a life that full of joy. What the Bible says, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. You are not going to rejoice because of the way things are, because of what somebody said, because of what somebody didn't say or didn't do. But you are going to rejoice because the Lord says rejoice. And again, rejoice. Okay? And then you're going to let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Yes, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Okay? That is why it is advisable to confess our sins to Him, to have our relationship with Him restored okay confession you are not going to confess to people because I remember my mother used to tell me that when the salvation was first preached to them there were people who had done very bad things especially during the fight for freedom there were people who had committed various sins there were some people who had been held and taken for detention. People who were praying, people who were fighting for freedom. And there were people who had gone back to their homes and even born children for them. So that when people 
came back from uh, wherever they had gone for detention, maybe somebody had one child, comes and finds the wife, has two children or three. There are people who had even also contributed to the death of some people, some relatives or some people in the village, villages. So uh, when they came back and salvation was preached, there were some people who went to confess of what they did. And guess what? You got to confess to a man that you went and did whatever you did with the wife and now the, the wife has two or three children that do not belong to him. What do you expect? Many people died because of that. They went to confess to people. Instead of confessing to God, they went to confess to people. And there it is, uh, it needs wisdom. It needs wisdom. It is good to confess to people if you have sinned against them, but then you also need wisdom. Wisdom on how to go about it, and wisdom that comes from God. You know how to go about these issues in life, and because it is good to confess to God what you have done for forgiveness, because God is the one who forgives. All right? Now, even if you go to confess to people, maybe you will be beaten, you will not be forgiven. Maybe you will be killed, you will not be forgiven. And maybe you had not even taken time to confess to God. Okay? So, Acts 10, verse 43 says, Acts 10, verse 43 says, Everyone who believes uh, into him will receive forgiveness of sins. Yeah. Everybody who believes in God will receive forgiveness of sins. And then First John 1.19 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous, to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, if we confess our sins. Okay? So you don't stay with your sins, hiding them in your heart, and maybe uh, hiding from people because you are worried what people will say when they discover what you did. The Bible is telling us very clearly that everyone who believes into him will receive forgiveness of sins. So the first thing, and I've kept on saying, is believing in God. Because if you don't believe in him and his power to forgive and to cleanse so that he makes you uh, whiter than snow, then if you don't believe, then you cannot even go to him. You will not be bold enough to go to him and confess. Because the belief that if you confess, something is good is going to come out of it, that is the one that, that will cause you to go to him for forgiveness. So, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all our righteousness. That is what the Bible says. So God did it and will continually do it due to his mercy and great love for us. All right? So God will not do it because you are good. Eh? Do not keep thinking that you are bad, that you are worse than every other person because as I keep on saying there is no sin that is bigger than another one. What the Bible says is that no sin will enter that city because the city that the Lord went to prepare for us um, 
and where we are supposed to go after our life on earth is a holy city. It's very holy. And those who live there are holy. And those who will finally go there are holy. So they will only go to join the other saints who have gone ahead. Yeah? And God is holy, we said. And God wants us to be holy. All right? And that is why he has given a promise to keep forgiving us and to keep cleansing us, to keep molding us, making us holy, so that at the end of everything, we shall be holy, just like he is. All right? So God will do it for you. Not because you are good, not because of anything good that you'll do, but because of his mercies. The mercies of God, they are new and fresh every morning. And the other day I asked that question. I asked this, why are the mercies of God new every morning? Why don't we use the masses of yesterday? But the Bible says very clearly, the masses are fresh every day. It is because the things we come across each day, they are different from what we came across yesterday. And maybe today, there is a heavier temptation. There is a danger that you are going to meet that you have never met. And so the masses of God will be there fresh, new, and prepared for that particular thing that you are going through today. All right? It's not about yesterday. Yesterday is gone. You have today. And today, God's masses are there for today. So you have to believe that whatever you are going to come across this day, this is a new day, and you don't know what it holds for you. You don't know, but God knows. God sees ahead. God knows what you will come across. And so he has prepared masses to deal with that issue. So if you come across it, God will be merciful. God will deliver you. God will help you if you believe. If you believe. All right? So, Ephesians 2, verse 4. Ephesians 2, verse 4, is the one that confirms what I've just said. That God did it and will continually do it due to his mercy and great love for us. However, Christians know that they are not immune of sins and so the following questions keep coming. All right? So today, in fact, I'm dealing with Christians. I'm dealing with the life of Christians. I've already dealt with the sinners and how they can come to the Lord, to the fountain of blood that was shed on Calvary, and how they can receive cleansing. Yes. But today I'm speaking about Christians who are already saved, they have confessed, and their sins are forgiven. And then what happens after that? What kind of life do you live after you become a Christian? There will be the following questions from Christians. Will God keep forgiving us? All right. So as Christians, if we sin, what will happen to us? Will God keep forgiving us? That is something that a Christian uh, will keep on being worried about. And sometimes you find that Christian is not even sure whether if the Lord comes today, he or she would go to heaven. And then another question that crops up is, what happens? If we commit the same sin over and over again, that is another thing that disturbs a Christian. Because maybe, maybe you are saved, and maybe 
you have confessed your sins, the ones you had done, <laughs> you confessed, and you were forgiven, all right? But as life continues, you have found yourself struggling with sin, okay? One sin keeps on recurring day after day. And then you even wonder what kind of a Christian am I? Another question that comes up is what if God is disappointed with me? What if God is disappointed with me? Because maybe I keep on committing that sin, I've been struggling with it, I confess, I'm forgiven, and then I find myself going back to it. What if God is disappointed with me and decides not to forgive me? So there is a Christian who is struggling with that kind of a question. And then another question that comes up is, will God be angry with me and eventually refuse to forgive me? Will God be angry with me and eventually will refuse to forgive me? All right? Another question that will come up is, what does the word of God say about Christian and sin? What does the word of God say about Christian and sin? And then another question that will come up is, what happens when Christians sin? What happens? Even you, if I ask you today what happens if a Christian sins, you may not know. You may not know. So, as believers in Christ, we need to understand God's forgiveness and God's thoughts about us. It is very, very important because as Christians, we have been commissioned, we have been commissioned to go and tell people about the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what are these good news? The good news is that Jesus came all the way from heaven to come and die on the cross so that his blood can cleanse everyone of the sin because all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Nobody is perfect in this world. Nobody is perfect. All right? We know that one day we shall have attained that perfection by God's grace, but for today, we cannot stand and say that we are perfect. So the good news is, the blood of Jesus on the cross was shed for us. So that that fountain of the blood of Jesus, we can keep on going there in that fountain and we are cleansed. All right? So, it is important that as a Christian, you understand God's forgiveness, and you also understand God's thoughts about us. Many Christians are filled with worry, anxiety, doubt, and despair. Are you there and you are worried? Are you there and you are anxious about your life, about your future, about your destiny? Are you there and you are worried? Are you there and you are anxious? Are you there and you have doubts whether you are saved or not? Although you confessed and you are forgiven and you say, I'm saved, are you there and you have doubts? Are you there and you have despair? You are desperate because you think your life is not going the way you should, you would have wanted it to be, all right? Are you there? Why do we have these issues of fear, doubts, despair? 
why do we do we have this these issues why do we have these issues this is because the christians the christians have either forgotten or they don't know what the bible says concerning these things all right it is because either you have forgotten or you don't know and you have never known what the bible says about salvation about sin about god's forgiveness about you don't know you have not read the word of god and you don't know the thoughts of god about it that's why you are worried that's why you are anxious because you don't know what god thinks about you and especially when you see all right uh, john 10 verse 28 john 10 verse 28 says this it says this and i give to them eternal life and they shall be they shall by no means perish forever and no one shall snatch them out of my hand hallelujah praise the lord my viewer that is the thought of god he says this and i give them eternal life and they shall by no means perish forever and no one shall snatch them out of my heart hallelujah praise the lord we talk about the right hand of god the right strong hand of god is a very strong hand and when it holds you with that hand of god the right strong hand of god when it holds you nothing and no one can take you away from him no one the bible says we have just read no one shall ever snatch them out of my hand who are these who are these people who are these ones who have been given eternal life who are these who will never be snatched from the hand of god my viewer once we are saved we cannot or we can never lose that salvation and i'll tell you why as we continue once you are saved and once you confess the lord jesus christ as your savior you cannot lose that salvation god's word ensures us on this fact those who have accepted the lord jesus christ as their savior are assured of eternal life yes they are they will never perish no one shall snatch them out of his hand when we received christ as our savior we received his eternal life this is a gift that can never be taken back or taken away by anyone we are now new creatures and god's children born of god with his life this can never be undone or changed the word of god cannot contradict itself my viewer glory to god glory to god this is what i said today i'm speaking about christians and i'm speaking about the position of christians in this world those who have believed in god those who have trusted in god those who have given their lives to god these are the people i'm talking about 
these people, they are still in this world. We are still in this evil world. But what the Bible is saying is that the salvation you have received can never be taken away. It can never, what God has done, what God has done in your life, it can never be undone by anyone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My dear, we are going for a short break, but when we come back, we will continue to explore the thoughts of God, the thoughts of God about us Christians. All right? Don't go away. Sometimes you feel lonely and rejected. Sometimes you need a motivation to keep you going. Sometimes you need a shoulder to lean on. Sometimes a word of God can heal it all. That's where Liz Refuge TV comes on board. A television network that offers social life teachings and moral upholds, 
music that promotes faith and inspires soul, and healing from professional counselors. Join us every Tuesday from 9 a.m. for inspiration at Liz Refuge TV on Facebook and Liz Refuge TV on YouTube. Liz Refuge TV, a media with a difference. continuing with our topic of God's cleansing and we are in part five because we've been dealing with this God's cleansing for the last few weeks 
Thank you very much for tuning in. For those who are following us, we really appreciate your presence. I would like to appreciate a few members as we continue. I would want to appreciate uh, Kennedy Muhongo. Thank you, Kennedy, for liking our page and for liking what we do. We really appreciate you. I would like to appreciate DJ Pangras. DJ Pangras is saying, following from Gedurai 45, Nairobi, Kenya. And he's saying this, you are blessed, Liz. Thank you very much, DJ, for tuning in from Nairobi, Kenya. We love you and we value you. Continue following and God will bless you, my tree. I would also like to appreciate MC Njoguna Mwangi Kamiri. And he says, here I am. Thank you, MC Njoguna, for watching Liz Leviuch TV. I'm sure your life will never be the same again. Thank you so much. We love you and we value you. Uh, MC Njogona again, yeah, he is saying, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, yes, all the glory and honor goes to God. We shall continue to appreciate you as you continue. Please tell us where you are watching from, and God will bless you. So before we went for break, we were just saying that we had just read John 10, 28, and it says, And I give to them eternal life, and they shall by no means, by no means, that means nothing and no one, they shall by no means perish. All right? Forever. Yeah, it talks about forever. Forever means days without an end. So, there is no time we will ever perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. That is God speaking. All right? So, just to confirm what we have said, Ecclesiastes, because we are read by the word of God. And I keep on telling you, the word of God is the answer. We may come here and talk about a lot of psychology. Yes, about our mind, the way our mind work, and then we do a lot of counseling. But at the end of the day, who is the best counselor? God, God, he has the answer to all our problems. Because my viewer, when our mind comes to an end, when we come to the end of the road, whom do we turn to? We turn to God. Even doctors, when they treat, and they come to the end of the road, and they see that they are going to lose a patient, whom do they turn to? To God. They tell God, oh God, they pray for their patients. Because when we come to the end of the road, as human beings, we turn to God. So, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 14 says, it says this, I know whatever God does, it will be forever. Hallelujah. I know that whatever God does, it will be forever. So if God is the one who has saved you, if God is the one who has given his son to die for you so that he can reconcile you to himself, if God says that he loves you, it will be forever. Amen? If you believe, say amen with me. 
If God says that he cares about you, my viewer, it will be forever. If God says that he has forgiven you your sins, it will be forever. If God says that he has cleansed you, or he will continually cleanse you, it will be forever. If God says that you are his child, if God says that he has made you his child, it will be forever. For I know what God has done is forever. Yes, God does not change. Once he does something, he does it. And it is forever. I want to give you an example of Israelites because I keep on saying that the promises that were made to Israelites eventually become our promises. Because we have become God's children by faith. You know, the Israelites made a lot of mistakes. From the time they were taken from Egypt, all the way from the time they went to the wilderness and they started worshipping other gods, they started disobeying God, they started doubting the power of God, and they were made to roam in the wilderness for 40 years. And all those who came from Egypt, they died in the wilderness. Only two people, Joshua and Caleb, who went to the promised land because they believed. Now, they continued like that until again they were taken to captivity. Where they were being told to sing the Lord's song. And then they were crying. And they were asking, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? All right? But even after all these whatevers and whatevers that happened to them, the Lord promised that eventually he would bring them back to their land, of which he did. Things seemed impossible, but whatever God says he's going to do, he is going to do. He's not, God is not a man that he should lie. God does not lie. And God does not say things which he knows that he cannot do. All right? So if he says things about you, that he loves you, that he cares about you, and that he'll forgive you your sins, that he'll cleanse you, that he'll take care of you, when he says all these things, it will be forever. He will do them today. He did them yesterday. He'll do it today. He'll do it tomorrow. And he'll do it forever and ever. If you believe that, say amen. Romans 11, verse 29 says, For the gracious gift and calling of God are irrevocable. Hallelujah. I told you, I told you, my dear friend, I told you, my viewer, today I'm speaking about Christians. I have come to give you hope in the Lord. Maybe you are there and you are losing hope. Maybe you are there. Now dikuwa umechanga nyikiwa. You are confused. You didn't know whether you are a Christian anymore or you are what. You didn't know. And you are feeling like even backsliding. Wow. Here is the word of God saying, For the gracious gift, can you say it with me, my viewer? For the gracious gift and calling of God are irrevocable. The gracious gift of salvation and the calling of God are irrevocable. It's not me saying, it's the Bible saying they are irrevocable. No one can change. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. The gracious gift of salvation is irrevocable. The calling of God is irrevocable. The question is, my dear, the question is, have you heard the voice of God? Have you heard the voice of God? Calling you? Have you heard the voice of God calling you? Or you say praise the Lord because you hear people saying praise the Lord. Or you say you are saved because you hear people saying they are saved. You know that has become like, like a music, like it's for everybody. You know, kilamutu. You hear people saying, I'm so and so and I'm saved. The question is, my viewer, because I want, by the time we are through with this session today, I want you to be sure. I want you to be sure. We are exploring the thoughts of God about you. And I want you to be sure. And I want you to be strong from today because you will have known the truth which you didn't know. So, the question is, have you heard the voice of God? Have you confessed the Lord Jesus Christ and received forgiveness of sins? Have you been cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus? If the answer is yes, then the word is telling us that the gracious gift that you have received the gift of salvation is irrevocable. And the word is telling us also that the calling, the calling of God, if you have heard the voice of God calling you, if you have been called, then that calling is irrevocable. That's what the Bible is saying. No one can take them away from you. No one can take the gift of salvation away from you. No one can take your calling away from you. If you know, it really doesn't matter what people say about you. If people say you are not well saved, if people say, I don't know you are what, or you are what people say about you, because you do A, B, C, D, People, they are not the one who will judge you at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the Bible says God is the one who will come to separate sheep and the goats. All right? And he will be the one who will question you about what you have been doing on earth while in this body, not the people. Not what the people say. Hmm? All right? So, I've come to encourage you. Because it is the word of God that is saying that your calling is irrevocable. If you know God has called you, and you know what he has called you to do, do it. Do it with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your body. Do it with all your strength. Do it, even to the glory and honor of God's holy name. Do it without fear. Do it without doubt. Do it without any, any what? Okay, any doubt. Because you know what God has said. And whoever questions you, tell them, God has called me. I heard the voice of God. I heard the voice of God. You know, me, I surprise people when I keep on saying, I will live and live and lead by example of what I say. I keep on saying and I keep on repeating professionally, I'm a trained teacher and a lecturer. All right? I keep on saying that. But what am I doing today? This is a call. What I'm doing today, 
People may talk about money, people may talk about what. But all I know is that what I'm doing today is a call from God. Because when God called me to enter into the ministry of singing, I heard the voice. I heard it three times. And when God said he was going to put a message in me, I heard it. And I remember what I said, my viewer. I remember what I said when I heard that voice. Three times. The third time I said this. In the first two times, I didn't even imagine what it was. <laughs> because I was just wondering, what is this now? What is this? I'm already happy, happy, a happy person in my profession and my other things that I'm doing. Why this now? But the third time, I remember saying, God, if it is you speaking to me, if you put that song in me, I'll sing it to the top of the mountain. That song, that new song, if it is you who will put it in me, I'll sing it to the top of the mountain. And if you put that message in me, I'll take it to the end of the world. I remember saying that. I remember saying that. And so if people now quest, people, if, if people question what I'm doing today, if people question it, I have no words for them. All I know, I'm like that blind person who was healed by Jesus. And he could see. And then he ran around there. He met people who were asking, who did this for you? And the man said, me, I even don't know all about that that you're asking. All I know is that I was blind, but now I can see. So I can also confidently say this. <laughs> I don't know about those other questions that people ask. I don't know why didn't you do it before? Why are you doing it now? You, you, you are a learned person. Why now? It's so many things. But all I know is that I heard the voice of God. And I know what I said after I heard that voice three times. So this is a call. And I know that it said that I was going to receive a new song and a message of which I should pass across. So apart from my counseling, the word of God, I have to speak the word of God. Because that counseling now, psychological, I know when our psychology comes to an end, we turn to God. And so I am confident of what I'm saying today. And even if people will question or not question, I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken because I know what I'm doing. All right? And I know about my calling. So the question is, what happens when Christians sin? Today I said I'm speaking about Christians <laughs> because I'm a Christian and because I have listened and I have known what is eating Christians. What happens when Christians sin? When we get saved, our expectations are that we would never sin again. That is the truth. Once you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, our expectations is that we would never sin again. Yeah. Later on, we discover that we can still sin, and this makes us confused. We feel guilty. And we find it hard to come to God in prayer. We feel there is no breakthrough to God. I'm sure my viewer, you have experienced this kind of thing. 
that when maybe you have quarreled with people when you have been involved in um, evil things, you try to pray and you feel that you do not have a breakthrough. Yeah. There are many people I have listened to, Christians, telling me they are Christians, but they have tried to pray. They, have tried, they feel like there is a disconnection between them and God. All right? We feel there is no breakthrough to God. My brethren, I want to assure you that God's promise to cleanse us still stands. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is the truth. It doesn't matter how you feel, <laughs> my friend. And you know, prayer is a must. Because prayer is the only way we speak to God, our Heavenly Father. Yeah, prayer is the only way. And we, you don't pray because you have money. You don't pray because you are happy. You don't pray because things are working for you. It is good to pray even you don't feel even when you feel like not praying. Just pray. Just speak to your father. All right? Why would you pray even when you feel like not praying? Even when you feel weak, even when you are sick, even when your life is facing destruction. Why would you pray? The answer is because God's promise still stands. We have just read here that what God has done is forever. And we have just read here that the gift of God, the gift of salvation, is irrevocable. We have just read that the calling of God is irrevocable. So God's promise to cleanse, and because that is what we are dealing with, God's promise to cleanse. Once God has promised something, he will never change. He has promised to forgive us our sins. He has promised to continually cleanse us and that is irrevocable. So it is good, even when you feel like the ground is sinking and like you are going down, it is good to encourage yourself in the Lord. And then God and tell him, God, your promise still stands. I believe you. I believe you. And no matter how feel they I feel, I believe you. I believe in your cleansing. I believe you are going to do something for me. I believe you. I believe you will not let me go down. I believe you. Because he says, I will hold you with my right strong hand. You will not fall. Then why would you worry? Yeah? The reason we feel distracted, devastated after sin, is because our enjoyment and our fellowship with God is hindered by sin. That is why we feel the way we feel. We feel because it's a fact that sin is the only thing that separates us from God. Sin is the only thing that separates us from God. Not poverty, not lack of food, not sickness, not anything, nothing. In fact, the Bible says nothing, not even death, can separate us from the love of God. Because he says, even if we die, he will raise us again. He will raise us again. We shall live again even if we die. We shall live again. He says that. So nothing can separate us. But the Bible is very clear that it's only sin 
that can separate us from it's only sin that can hinder that can hinder our enjoyment with God our fellowship with God it can hinder it breaks the fellowship but God has promised to restore us that is our consolation that even if we sin sin yes will hinder the enjoyment because you cannot enjoy when you have sinned and it will also hinder the relationship because God is not happy with you when you have sinned but if you confess that is what the Bible says very clearly if you confess this sin he will forgive you he will forgive you all right God is righteous and cannot tolerate sin that is what the Bible says God is righteous he cannot tolerate sin God cannot share platform with the devil God is holy and he demands that we be holy also our conscience when we have sinned our conscience tells us that we have a problem with God just as it did in the garden of Eden in the garden of Eden when Adam sinned it is his conscience that alerted him that something is wrong that something is wrong between him and God and that is why Adam ran away he went to hide he went to hide because his conscience told him that something is wrong when he disobeyed so it is the same thing that happens my dear friend my dear brother my dear sister is the same thing it is not the end of the world all that is happening is that your conscience because you are made in the image of God and when God kept man in the garden of Eden he expected him to be like him all right and he expected to relate with him one on one because of that your conscience now tells you that you a relationship with God is not right then what are you supposed to do you are not supposed to bury your head you are not supposed to say that you are backsliding you are backsliding you are going where <laughs> eh? i hear people asking you are lefting yeah you are lefting once in a group you are lefting once you have been um, admitted in the kingdom of god you cannot left you are lefting you are going where don't go anywhere don't even think about going anywhere all you need to do is to repent confess your sin to god and he will forgive you and then you continue with the journey to heaven we are going for a short break don't go away
Are you tired of searching for affordable rooms for your smart business? Then worry no more. Strong Tower Plaza Pipeline is here for you. Located along Kiambogo Element Taita Road opposite oil tanks. Few meters away from Jehovah Shama Prayer Center is an ideal business premise that offers affordable business offices. Precious halls for events such as birthday parties, wedding events, churches, supermarkets, and colleges. For business starters, we have small shops and renting out single rooms where water and electricity is not a problem. We have a 24-hour security system for your business without forgetting an ample parking space for your vehicle. You can reach us on 0701-879-585 or 0733-791-855. 866 or 0722-291-165. Potential wholesalers and retail customers are waiting for you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. For the early bird catches the worm. Strong Tower Plaza Pipeline. Your business is our priority. <laughs> Praise the Lord, my viewer. Thank you so much for your uh, 
support and for everything, every contribution that you do for Liz Refuge TV is noted with a lot of thanks and it is our prayer that God will bless you for your support and for your continued presence. Thank you, thank you very much. I would like to appreciate two very special people uh, who have been with us since we began. I would like to appreciate uh, Simon Saindimo all the way from Kajiado. Thank you very much for being with us. I've seen you there in WhatsApp. And I've also seen a very special person called Mwangi HSC. Mwangi HSC. I assume you are all the way from Muranga. You are so special to us. We love you and we value you. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'm sure your life will never be the same again. Uh, I would also like to appreciate all the others who are watching. You may not have sent a message, but you are watching. We thank God for you and we appreciate you. Keep watching and God bless you. So we were continuing to say that what God has said, what God has done is irrevocable. And we were saying that what we were asking ourselves, what happens when Christian sin? And I've come to tell you that it is not the end of the world. God is our heavenly father. He knows you by your name. He is the one who created you. With his own hands, he created you. He created that heart of yours. He created that mind of yours. He created you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strengths. He knows who you are. He knows where you are going. You are going out, you are coming in, he knows. He knows what you met today, what you'll meet tomorrow. He knows all these things. Putting that into account, then he has made a promise to forgive, to continually forgive you. He, had made a prom he has made a promise to continually cleanse you. And he will continue doing that. Remember he has said he will be with you until the close of the age. So if you are there and you are Christian, all right? If you are there and you are Christian, and maybe you have fallen into a certain sin, I want to encourage you. It is not the end of the world. It is not. If you read the book of Hosea, you will be able to see what Prophet Hosea went through. And God was aware what he was going through. And he encouraged him to keep on keeping on. He encouraged him not to give up. So, we were saying that our conscience is the one that tells us that something is wrong. And when you know that something is wrong, what do you do? You go back to the drawing board, you go back to where the rain started beating you. You pray to God for forgiveness. John, uh, First John 1, 9, and we had read it again. We will read it again. It says this. And this is the thought of God. Remember we are exploring the thought of God about this. What do we do as Christians when we sin? What does God think about it, about this situation when we sin? And it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us 
our sins, and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Yeah. We go back and see what the Bible says about it. It says that if we confess our sins, to who? To God. He is faithful. God is faithful. In fact, I want to tell you today, my brother, it is us who become unfaithful to God because of our human weaknesses. But God has never been unfaithful to us. God has never. And God will never be unfaithful. What he says, if he says, I will be with you until the cross of the age, that is what he's going to do. Because he's God. He's not a man that he should lie. This shows that God's promise still stands. Yeah, the promise he has made of cleansing. Remember we have been exploring God's promise of cleansing. For the last four weeks, this is the fifth week, we are exploring this promise of God's cleansing. And this shows that God's promise still stands. This verse was written for believers. Yeah? This verse was written for believers. And that is why I'm speaking to believers today. It is a fact that when we sin, our fellowship with God or our relationship with God is interrupted. But since God's promise still stands, we simply need to confess our sins to God. When we do, God forgives us and cleanses us of the sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, my viewer, there is no need to worry. There is no need to die, to take a rope. But because you are a Christian and now you have sinned, you take a rope, you go and hang yourself, do not hang yourself. Do not take poison. Do not do all those things that you are planning to do. Do not leave the church. Do not pack your things and leave and say, I'll never go to church again. Do not think this is the end of the world. It is not the end. Because the Bible is saying all you need to do, God is faithful, God has made the promise, God has given his son. Well, in fact we sing, there is a song that we used to sing. God gave his son for me upon Mount Calvary. It, it goes like that, that song. <laughs> so, he gave it for me. He gave his son for me. Yeah? And that precious blood of Jesus, it has never lost its power. It never loses its power. Yeah? It will always be there to cleanse us. And we are saying this, that the fountain, the blood of Jesus Christ never loses its power. That's what we are saying today. It never loses its power. And whoever accuses you of your weaknesses as a Christian, tell that person the blood of Jesus never loses its power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The fountain filled with the blood of Calvary will never go dry. I know there are some people who like making themselves holier than thou. And they think it is their work now to go accusing everybody. And when you try to follow their lives, they are not even righteous. It's only that they have not been discovered. But remember, God sees the deepest part of people's hearts. And God looks at the motives. Yeah, 
the motive of your heart. What did you did you contemplate to go and see? Did you plan? Or you just found yourself? Yeah? Now, the blood of Jesus cleansed the sins of the past. When you first believed, the blood of Jesus cleansed the whole of your past. If you are saved and if you have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are a Christian, then you don't have to worry about your past because God, the blood of Jesus, cleansed the sins of the past when you first believed. So when you first believed, your sins were forgiven and you received cleansing from God. The blood was effective then. It was effective when you got saved. The blood is effective now. Today, the blood is still effective. And the blood will be effective in the future. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What an assurance. So remember we were dealing with the question, what happens when a Christian, or if a Christian, gets into sin? And I'm saying today, confidently saying this, that the blood of Jesus was effective. When you first went to the Lord and you got saved, the blood of Jesus was effective. All your past was cleansed. And as a Christian, you are not supposed to remember the past because it was cleansed. Worry not about what we people will say. Hati hata ukimuona hapa, akisema hameokoka, ye ndi alifanya A, B, C, D. Don't worry. Don't worry. Because the blood of Jesus was effective then. It is effective today. If you find yourself in there, the blood of Jesus is effective. All you need to do is to come back to God and confess your sins and you will be forgiven. And it will do that. The blood of Jesus, that is why it was shed on Calvary. It will continue doing that until the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That is why the Bible says, call on me when you are in trouble and I will help you. Call on me. Call on your father. He's your father. He's your father. Let me ask you. God is our heavenly father. You as a father or a mother, whoever you are, if your child sins, do you throw that child away? Huh? Eh? If your child comes and confesses and says, Mom or Dad, I'll never do it again. Do you throw that child away? You forgive. What if that sin is repeated again? Will you kill that child or throw the child away? You will forgive again. In any case, how many times have we been commanded to forgive? Remember what the Bible says? How many times in a day? Are we supposed to forgive? If then God would expect us to forgive those many times, what about him as our heavenly father? And him, remember, he's perfect. Him, he is not like us. He does not have any imperfection, human imperfection. Him, he's perfect. What about him? How many times would he forgive? And that is why I'm saying this confidently, knowing very well there are some people who are holier than thou who are there to judge others. Yeah? And I know maybe they even dispute what I'm saying today here. But I'm saying this, I don't care what they say. I want to encourage somebody there, somebody who is feeling weak, somebody who is despairing in life, Somebody who is going down, call on God. He will help you. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 
You are so precious in the eyes of God. Whoever you are, even if you feel so filthy, call on him. He will help you. And if you have sinned, confess. And he will help you. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will restore you. And he will restore, restore his relationship with you. I'm encouraging you in Jesus' mighty name. I'm encouraging you. Somebody might be asking, what about repeated sins? <laughs> Somebody must be there asking, what about repeated sins? When we commit the same sin over and over again, we feel so bad. Yeah, it is a fact. We feel bad. We feel devastated. We feel filthy. We feel like we shouldn't live again. We feel a lot of pain. We become ashamed of ourselves. The cycle of sin repeats itself and we become more and more discouraged. Are you there? And you are feeling that way. Are you there? We assume God must also be ashamed of us. We assume God is, is, is disappointed in us. And therefore, God will not forgive us. This, however, can never be the case. This is because the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 13. Ephesians 1, 13. It says this. And we shall read verse 13. We shall read verse 17 and verse 18. And I'm speaking to somebody there who is very disappointed, who is giving up because of this repeated sin. And I told you that we are going to explore together. Remember our motto here in Liz Refuge TV. We normally say, don't go down alone. Don't go down alone. That is our motto. And that is why we take time even to explore the word of God and see what it says about certain things. We combine our counseling with the word of God over these issues that come to us. It says this, the Bible says this in Ephesians 1, we read verse 13, 17, and 18. It says this, In whom he trusted, after that he had, in whom he trusted, after that he had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that he believed, he was sealed with that holy spirit of promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. It is talking about God. And remember we are trying to find out what does God feel about us. So this is the God that we are talking about. The God that you trusted. All right? The first day you heard about him, the God you trusted, the God you had, the word that he had, the word of truth. Yeah? You have heard the word of truth, the word of truth about this God, about this God, because that is what we have been speaking about. And remember the other said, we said that through this word, the truth is that he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. The truth is that we have become his children through faith. The truth is that he sent his only begotten son 
to die for us, to restore us to himself. That through this, he has promised to be with us until the close of the age, until the day of Jesus Christ. And that through this, this that we have been reading about, his promise to forgive, to cleanse us, that through this, we do not belong to ourselves, we belong to him. And we can continue and continue talking about the truth about this God. The gospel of your salvation. You have heard the gospel of your salvation. And what is this gospel? Is what we have been speaking about. Jesus Christ coming all the way from glory to come and die for you and me so that we can be reconciled to this God. Yeah? That is the gospel of salvation. And then in whom also, after that, he believed. You believed in this God. After hearing the gospel of your salvation, you believed in this God. He was sealed after believing, after believing, and after God doing his work of cleansing. You are sealed, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sealed. Ukona muhuri. Ukona muhuri. Ya roho mutakatifu. You are sealed. And remember we have just said that what God has done is forever. Is forever. So are you there? Are you there? And you are desperate. Just remember that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to God. And then verse 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Hallelujah, glory to God. I don't know how I'm going to explain this. Because remember we said that why Christians get worried, why Christians get weak, why Christians even talk about backsliding and so on, is because they may not, maybe they have forgotten, or they don't know the truth about God. All right? And now what is the Bible saying here, verse 17? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, our Father of glory, our God, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And the Bible says, if you don't have wisdom, pray to God. And he will give you wisdom. He is so generous. He will give you generously. He will give you wisdom. Yeah, if you have no wisdom, pray. So that's what the Bible says. That you may have wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. It is my prayer today, my dear brother, my dear sister, that God will give you wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Omba mungu akupatie hekima. You get wisdom from God so that, and the knowledge of him, so that you can know where you stand with him. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that he may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is my prayer, my dear brother, my dear sister, that your eyes, inner eyes will be opened up. That your inner eyes will be opened up so that you may know 
the hope of your calling. Remember we talked about your calling. Have you heard the voice of God? Have you been called? So it is my prayer that God, if you have heard your calling, if you heard your calling, if you heard the voice of God, then you should know the hope of your calling. What do you hope for after that calling? What do you hope for? Hmm? My viewer, what do you hope for? If you don't have a hope, then you will be desperate. Then you will despair. But if you have a hope and you know what you are hoping for, and the Bible is saying clearly that what hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, the riches that God has for you, that you may know what God has for you, for the saints, for those who have been called and cleansed, what has God kept for them? What are these riches? What are these, these riches that he has for the saints? My brother, my sister, it is my prayer that you will come to this point where you have the knowledge of God, where the, you have the hope of your calling, and where you know what is kept for you. Don't give up. Don't give up and don't go down alone. We have come to the end of this session, and before we leave, I would like to remind you that we are always on every Tuesday from 9, and on Thursday, I'm normally in my office, right here, seeing people one on one. And I would like to encourage you to continue sending topics to us, the topics that you would like us to deal with. You have the number on the screen. Keep on sending if you have prayers that you need us to, to pray for you. Keep sending them using that number on the screen. And if you are also there, you are talented in one way or the other, you are a counselor or you are a motivational speaker, or you are a preacher or a teacher for the word of God, you would like to join us. We work as a team here in Lee's Refuge TV and you are welcome. You can join us so that we can continue touching the lives of people. Karibu sana. So let's go to God in prayer so that we can leave. We have five minutes that we are going to use to pray. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we come to you this morning to thank you, to praise you, and to glorify your name. My Father and my God, I lift your name above every other name because I know there are so many names in this world, but there is none that matches yours. You are a Father of glory. You are all-powerful. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, we thank you, we glorify you, and we honor you for this far that you brought us. We want to thank you for His Leverage TV and for this far that you brought us. We thank you for the lives of people who have been touched through this media. And we want to pray for them that those that have heard your word, that that word will have a place in their hearts. Lord, I pray that you may continue uplifting your people in every way. I pray that you may continue upholding your people in every way. Oh my God, I want to remember those who are despairing in this life, those who are even doubting and those who are thinking, God, that you do not exist because of the problems that they are going through, because of the difficulties in this life. I pray that you may reveal yourself to them in a deeper way that you may help them, dear Lord, even to know you whom to know is to have eternal life. My Father and my God, 
I pray for their needs. I may not be able to know all their needs, but you know them, Jehovah. I pray that you may touch each one of them at their point of needs, and that you may supply unto those needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, I praise you, Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I honor you this morning because I know that you have continued to answer the prayers of your people. Thank you for the testimonies that I have received, my Father and my God, of what you are doing, O oh God, through this media. My Father and my God, I thank you because it is your own doing. My Father, may you receive all the glory and honor. May you be glorified. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, I praise you, Lord, I glorify you. And as we part today, I pray that you may keep us in your will, O oh God. And when you bring us together right here another day, oh God, to hear your word and to hear counseling from you, we shall praise you and honor your name. Thank you for answering our prayers, for we have prayed and trusted in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Till next time, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Sometimes you feel lonely and rejected. Sometimes you need a motivation to keep you going. Sometimes you need a shoulder to lean on. Sometimes a word of God can heal it all. That's where Liz Refuge TV comes on board. A television network that offers social life teachings and moral upholds, music that promotes faith and inspires souls, and healing from professional counselors. Join us every Tuesday from 9 a.m. for inspiration. At Liz Refuge TV on Facebook, and Liz Refuge TV on YouTube. Liz Refuge TV, a media with a difference. Liz Refuge TV, a media with a difference.